This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and this is the ultimate drone shootout right here. We've got DJI's Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air 2, which is brand new out, and DJI's Mavic 2 Pro. This has been my primary drone for a long time now. Uh, I did pick up the Mini when it came out to give me something really portable in case I needed it. And then this is the newest one to come to the market right now, which really is blowing about everything else away. So I wanna kinda talk about the differences between them. We'll take them out into the field, show you the quality differences as well, and which one might be the right one for you. Um, I love shooting with drones because it can give you a really unique perspective or if you're shooting video you can track your subjects and give you something that you couldn't do without another person videotaping you and then also if you're trying to stay away from a bunch of people right now this will allow you to kind of back off a bit stay wherever you want even in your car and still get those unique perspectives and amazing quality photos so let's get into this and find out which one might be the best drone for you. So let's start things off with the Mavic Mini. This is actually a drone that has grown on me quite a bit. I just made a recent update video on my thoughts after owning it for six months because it did get a whole lot better thanks to some firmware updates. Um, this is actually the cheapest drone by quite a bit, but don't let that confuse you and think that this might be the best drone for beginners. It might not be, and there's a lot more that factors into this. The, the signature achievement on this is obviously the size, but mostly the weight. This is under 250 grams, which means if you are in an area like Canada that does not allow you to fly recreational drones unless it is under 25 grams without or 250 grams without getting a license this might be the best drone for you no matter what but that does come with a few weaknesses which we'll get to in a sec now this did get an update recently that allowed it to record manual video and photo and what that means is that in addition to being uh, kind of a great drone to learn on because it's small and inexpensive it is also a great drone to learn photography and videography with because you can adjust all of your settings just like you could on any of these higher end cameras or the cameras that you're shooting everything else with so it's a great way to learn photo and video also because of its small size it's very unnoticeable and unassuming. So if you wanna kind of hide away from people and not attract a lot of attention to yourself, this is going to be the drone to do it. Now, the problem with it is that it doesn't shoot like raw or any log modes or manual picture profiles or anything like that. So if you're somebody who likes to edit your images and posts, being stuck with their standard profile in JPEG only might be a little bit of a hit and could affect your quality if you're trying to make those edits. Now the good thing here is that somehow DJI has made amazing battery life of over 30 minutes on this thing, which is unbelievable from a drone like this. And so with even one battery or two, you can have a ton of fun and just take it out for a crazy long time. The downside is going to be the range. The range is gonna be the most limited on this. Depending on the area you're in, you might get anywhere from about a thousand feet up to a couple thousand feet. And that might be enough for most cases, but if you're planning on like scaling mountains or taking this out uh, above the ocean or something like that, you're not gonna get very far and you're always gonna be at risk of losing signal. So that's something I would really keep in mind if you're looking at a drone. Now, while that does make you kind of think that this might be the best starter drone, there are a bunch of features that it actually lacks that might be a great option if you're somebody who's using this for the first time. One is that there's no obstacle avoidance on this drone. So that means you can absolutely fly it straight into a wall, into a tree. It won't even try to stop you. And so for somebody who hasn't had a lot of experience, it is going to be the easiest of all of these to crash. The other thing you might want to keep in mind is that there's no tracking built in. If you're unfamiliar with tracking, it is the option in these drones that give you the ability to select a subject, whether it be you or a car or something else, and have the drone automatically follow that subject. It can be great for beginners or somebody who doesn't have an extra cameraman with them and wants a drone to just kind of follow them uh, around the beach or do circles around them. So it doesn't have a lot of those tracking modes. It does have some automatic flying modes like circle or helix. However, it still has the most limited number of those compared to the other one. So um, you do get away with some automatic flight modes, but just compared to the other ones, and these are things that beginners love a lot, it does not have the best of the bunch. Now, if you guys need some more information, if you're thinking about picking up this drone, go ahead and check out the description below because I've got some links with my full review as well as my thoughts after owning it for six months. 
So now let's talk about the, probably the best of the bunch right here, the Mavic Air 2. But before we do, guys, if you in any way need to increase your online presence, create a better website, or redo the site that you already have, there is no better time than now. So go check out squarespace.com. I've got some coupon codes as well to get you guys a great deal. You guys know they have a bunch of awesome templates and it's so crazy easy to get your site set up in a matter of minutes. So I wanna add a picture for my camera guides right on the front page. I can just click this little image search, type in camera and bam, I've got all of these amazing images I can use as a thumbnail. Maybe you've got something like a food blog, no problem, Squarespace has you covered here. And just check this out, I can still go in here, change my photo settings, uh, control my crops, custom filters, just anything that you can think of. I can now add my products to sell for an entire storefront. I can create some awesome custom galleries, which I can even have password protected for my clients, which is awesome. And then even for my latest Instagram image, they can be imported to the gallery here or post automatically to the website homepage. It's absolutely free for you guys to get started, so go ahead and get that done. When you create something awesome, I know you guys will, go ahead and use coupon code Learning Cameras, and you'll get 10% off, and you can go live with that site today. So now let's talk about the Mavic Air 2, the newest drone to come out. And already on the hardware side, there are a lot of differences here. Um, the first is gonna be, yes, this drone is much larger than this. It is actually twice as heavy or more than twice as heavy. So you're gonna notice that right off the bat. You do get upgrades to USB-C. Also, the controller on here has been redesigned. I like it, it's a little bit more ergonomic. Um, it does have an easier way of storing your phone into the top right here. However, again, this is even much larger than the remotes that come with the other drones right here. Now, the Air also comes with eight gigs internal memory. Uh, this has been great for me for two reasons. If my card fills up, I know that I always have some space left over. Or if you're like me and you've forgotten to put in an SD card on occasion. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You can at least take some photos and videos without a card using that internal storage as long as you keep that free. Also, we do have a brand new image sensor in this. It is a half inch sensor, but it's gonna mean better image quality all around, uh, also for video as well. And we do have raw recording. So this camera is gonna be JPEG only, but we have raw recording as well as better picture profiles for video to allow in more dynamic range and more information. So overall, you're gonna have some much higher quality recording. Also, you do have some enhanced photo modes like automatic HDR and scene recognition and high resolution modes on this to kind of enhance that quality even more. And on the video side, you can record up to 4K, uh, this is gonna be limited at 2.7K, not needed for most people, but if you wanna be able to shoot at 4K, you can even do it at 60 frames per second, which would allow you to do some slow motion, or you can bump it down to 1080p and get 120 frames per second for even more slow motion out of his camera. Now we talked about why this might not be the best beginner drone, and this is where this kind of starts to make more sense. You do have sensors all around the drone with obstacle avoidance. So if you begin to approach an object or approach a tree or anything like that, the drone is supposed to see that and manually stop or get out of the way. Along with that comes active track. So you can actually select a subject and have the drone track around it, go parallel to it, a bunch of different stuff. This is a feature I use all the time and it's something that I really love about these higher end drones and is great for both beginners and pros as well. Now there is an advantage to this size and that is it is gonna be better in windy conditions. It has much more control and it is much faster as well. So if you're looking for something that is really good in any condition, this is going to do much better job than this. You're also gonna see a massive difference with how far this can fly. The chances of you losing signal using this drone, which uses a Wi-Fi technology, is much greater than the OcuSync version that's on this. It is almost, it's impossible to get a signal interference that cuts this drone out unless you are flying tremendously far away. That can be a huge difference making sure you never lose this drone. It can always communicate back to you and report its signal and its battery life. It is easier to fly this drone and make sure that you never lose it. Also being larger comes with some advantages, which is that it's better in windy conditions and can fly faster. So if you're at something like a beach or a mountain range where you might wanna fly further, 
faster and also need uh, a little bit more resistance to those winds. This is the drone that's gonna get it done. So overall, some massive upgrades all around. Now on the negative side here, you are above this 250 gram limit. So in some countries that might mean you cannot fly without a license. So you're either gonna want to get this drone right here just so you can fly if you don't have a license or you're gonna need to get that license before you buy this. Now if you're in a country that it doesn't matter, that might not be a negative to you, but do keep in mind this drone is twice the price. So that's a huge difference to pay, but like I said, you're getting upgraded in every single area, in operation, in features, in video, in photo quality, and even if you're a beginner, having obstacle avoidance and tracking modes might make this the best drone for you. So now let's get into the Mavic 2 Pro and we're going to get a little more technical on the photo side for this but it's going to be worth it. Um, first of all this does come in two varieties. There's a Mavic 2 Zoom and Pro. The Zoom is a smaller sensor lens or sensor camera but it does have a zoom lens on it giving you a little bit of push. Um, to me that doesn't really make sense right now. If you're going to get this camera it's going to be for the quality and to get that kind of quality you're going to want that one inch sensor on this one. So do keep that in mind. This is a half inch sensor on this. This is a one inch sensor. You're going to get a big boost in dynamic range, in low light results, in a lot of photo and video quality aspects on this as well. Also do keep in mind you're bumping up to 20 megapixels on this versus a 12 megapixel on this. Now, I do know that this can shoot a 48 megapixel mode. If you watch a full review on this, you'll see why that might not be as good as you think it is. And uh, really and truly, this is going to be better in terms of resolution and in terms of what your output will be in almost every situation. Now, if you're a video shooter, you can also shoot 10-bit log on this one. Here's where that matters. If you're gonna be grading your video dramatically, you're gonna see a huge difference in quality quality in how well this grades and the noise, especially in the shadow areas, I am able to see a very big difference when comparing footage and comparing photos from both of these drones. You are definitely seeing the advantage to having that larger sensor, the log profiles, and so many other features that are really making this a better quality camera. Now one of the biggest features for me is actually having an adjustable aperture. So this can go from f2.8 to I believe f11, whereas this is gonna be a fixed f2.8 lens. Um, where I think that makes the most difference is actually gonna be for video shooters because keeping your shutter speed at a constant double frame rate is really hard. Even if you're using ND filters, it's really difficult to get that exactly right. So being able to adjust your aperture and use that to control your light is a great uh, way of getting things started. Now you can shoot shallower depth of field on this one, but I still think that it's not really shallow enough for that to be an advantage for you. So the big question is gonna be which one of these you should buy. Um, there are really two reasons to get the Mavic Mini here. The two reasons are going to be A, if you're in an area that requires you to have a license and you do not have a drone license in order to fly a drone, under or over 250 grams, this is gonna be a no-brainer. Also, it is half the cost of anything else on the market, and so getting something for under $400 might just be the only thing that you can afford. Now, if you can step up to the Mavic Air 2, there are so many reasons to do it. Whether it is photo or video quality, whether it is your range, whether it is your automated flight controls and tracking and obstacle avoidance, even if you are a beginner, this is going to be the drone for you. You really can't go wrong with it. It is gonna give you so many more options. It'll take up a little bit more space in your bag, um, a little bit heavier as well, 570 grams versus 249. So just keep that in mind, but it is so much better in every area. You really can't go wrong. Now, if you are gonna step up to the Mavic 2 Pro, there is really only one reason to do it, and that is you need the ultimate in photo and video quality. Having that one inch 20 megapixel sensor is gonna give you more dynamic range, better low light performance, overall just better photos all around, and when it comes to video as well, having 10 bit log is going to mean greater flexibility in grading this, and you're gonna get that better quality video in addition to that. 
Now this is gonna cost you double the price almost as this, being $1,500 compared to this right now at $800. That's going to be tough to justify for a lot of people, but you could see that difference and I could notice it as well when comparing my photos. So let me know what you guys think, which ones you're considering. Hit me up if you have any questions on this and stay tuned, I just got in the Evo 2, which is actually going to potentially blow away the Mavic 2 Pro at the best drone right now that you can get. And so we're gonna take a look at this too, so stay tuned, subscribe, please like guys. I'll see you soon in that new video.